morning's message will be given by two of our Unity members. Our first speaker, Jeanette Knights, is a retired high school science and special education teacher, as well as an active member of Unity of Washington, D.C. She sings with the Unity Sanctuary Choir, serves as a soprano section leader, she is a lay leader and a Unity Book Club co-facilitator. Jeanette is also a published author. Her article entitled A Return to Unity was featured in Unity Magazine in 2016, and she has also published a book of poems entitled How I Get My Highs, Poems to Awaken the Divine Presence Within. Her book was featured, was a featured, uni, excuse me, her book was a featured selection in Unity's book club. Paperback copies are available in the Unity of Washington, D.C. bookstore and in digital form on Amazon. Our second speaker, Patricia J. Williams, is a dynamic voice in both her workplace and community. She's been an on-air host and radio personality for Urban One and can now be heard on Turning Corners, the podcast, where she shares stories of everyday people with extraordinary life experiences. She also performs original and commissioned poetry as well as selections from her first book, Epiphany Poems, published in 2017. Ms. Williams is an active member of the Federal City Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and this past March, Ms. Williams was invited to be one of the six Delta authors on tour. Ms. Williams holds several church leadership, leadership positions at Unity of Washington, D.C., and enjoys volunteering with numerous nonprofit organizations. Ms. Williams holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Journalism from Temple University and a Master's degree from the University of Maryland College Park. Let's give them both a warm welcome. Good morning, Unity. Good morning. This took me by surprise when Courtney asked me to be one of the main speakers for this morning. I was totally off, taken off guard, and it was a pleasure, and I felt so honored to be given this opportunity. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> Those of you who know me know I always like to read and share my poems. It's my passion. I really do enjoy. It's a, I believe it's a spiritual gift that God has given to me, and I just want to share. So please, I hope you enjoy it the poems that I'm about to read. Two of them are from my book, and two of them are recent compositions. The first one is, Who Am I? It's different from the one in my book. It's a follow-on. So if you feel that's the same poem, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? I look within my being in order to see the image and likeness of God in me, a child of Almighty God in reality, a spiritual being with huge potentiality, a little lower than the angels, surrounding me, a living soul clothed in a human body, living on planet Earth temporarily, forgetting at times, though, who God created me to be, but I remember who I am and claim my divinity. Despite whatever is happening with me, I look beyond my limitations and see my possibilities. I am perfect. I am whole. I am happy. I am free. Making these claims daily is a blessing to me. For the truth is, that's who I am in reality. <laughs> Thank you. The next one is a follow-up, and it's entitled Goodwill. Now, if I want to get there, I have to have goodwill in my heart. I love the word goodwill. It resonates with me. It reminds me that God has always has been good to me. It's the love of my friends and my family. It's the way I feel wholeheartedly. When we hold ill will for others, we pay the penalties. We attract from others the same enmities. Love holds ill will for no one. Love sets us free. 
Hold goodwill in your heart. It's good for you and for me. In times of natural man-made disasters, there is goodwill to see. We see those who display their love and mercy. We see sung and unsung heroes who show us how to be. Some even sacrifice their lives to aid and stand up for humanity. Goodwill, no exceptions. We know intuitively Goodwill, even when in the midst of mankind's cruelty. At times like this, it's very wise to use the golden key, which is we thank God, his love for us, and goodwill sets us free. Yes, goodwill for all humanity. Goodwill will set us all free. Goodwill is always simple, but it's not easy. The negative ego may distract us with thoughts of enmity. We take the straight and narrow way. It's good for you and me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the next one is a little bit more, uh, come on what real life is all about. <laughs> this is my last poem. But the name of it is Judging and Forgiving. This is one of my newest compositions. Okay. <laughs> Oft times we are horrified by the wrong some folks do. We may judge them and exclaim, what a horrible crew. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. We can follow his example and say the same thing too. Be aware that when we ridicule people who seem crazy and weak, we are perpetuating our own weaknesses by what we think and speak. Our ego tendencies tend to lead us astray. We may desire to react in our own unwise, wayward way, but we have to choose to work wisely with God's wisdom and his grace. Without a trace of doubt, we follow God's way to bring forth more peace and love to this human race. We need that. We need that. Thank you. The last one I'm going to read is from my book. I think it's the last poem, one of the last poems in my book. And I like to imagine a beautiful world, a beautiful world that is here in reality, but we still have to work to make it manifested. We still have to bring it forth for it to be manifested in reality. It's entitled, A New Normal. Here are my thoughts. <laughs> At some future time, hopefully not long from now, miracles will be our new normal. We will know how. We know that love has the power to make life great. We know what to do to react this perfect state, to reach this perfect state. We know that peace begins with me as well as with you. To live in peace, we know what to do. We know that loving our neighbors, even when they are wrong, and saying words of kindness may help us to get along. We know that if people want to engage us in war, we send them flowers of blessings. That's what love is for. We know that love can tr transform all those who desire to hate. It may take a while, but just be patient and wait. We know that God guides us to know the right things to do. We take the right actions with like-minded crew. We know right from wrong, so we do what is right. With God's guidance, we fight the good fight. With God's guidance, we fight the good fight. 
we know that hell is a state of mind, and likewise it's heaven. We get to heaven by forgiving 70 times 7. We know that forgiveness frees us from torture and pain. This gives great relief, and we can smile again. We know that loving one another is the way to live. In this perfect state, there is nothing to forgive. We know that the taste of love is forever sweet. To love and be loved is always a treat. We know that fear is fake and heaven is real. This is true no matter how we feel. We know that God's love and grace frees us from fear. When love swells in us, this vision is clear. We know we can use our unique gifts to serve with love. The things we are good at, the things we are good at, we do more of. We know love is key to heal all wounds and ills. In this state, we are happy with God's will. We know that things we thought impossible are impossible, are possible as we grow. We can even walk on water, for Jesus said so. <laughs> we know that hope, faith, and belief can get us to this conscious state. We know these things will happen, but only God knows the date. In this state, there is no karma. The invisible we see. Perfect health, instant healing, telepathy. <laughs> we rise above walls and all physical laws. A new normal on earth, a gift from God to all. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Unity. Good morning. Amen. So this love letter to God was written specifically for World Day of Prayer this year. Infinite presence, unlimited potential. And so I remixed it, played around with it a little bit, thought I would reshare it because I was blessed by it and I believe that you will be as well. God is all there is and will ever be. Now this love letter to God was written a long time ago. I mean in a time and in a place when emptiness released itself out into the universe and God strolled in like Denzel. I mean the brother was there. He gave birth to me and to the blues and to Boyer Street and Macon, Georgia, Mamie's Eight, Bob's Two, and then to me and to Double Dutch and Bubblegum and Mitty and Mitchell Papa and the number eight, and to love. And God gave birth to love. Now, love allowed God and God invited love and love invited God and love allowed God. Love allowed God. And then I learned to love God Allowed. You see what I'm saying? I mean, because it would be like this. So here we be. We be here, turning corners and turning up, turning faded pages bent at unresolved crooked corners and alongside those bedraggled bibled edges. Framed, tamed, maimed, entombed in splintered vision. Seekers of peace, peace seekers, seeking peace and finding solace among crafty dinner thieves. Decades whispering there, haunting there, calling me. Now, sister, where you be? Sister, who you be? Sister, stand where you be and come and sip and drink from possibility of the thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, from filled to overflowing vessels, I am here. I am here. It's God calling. It's God calling. Infinite presence, unlimited potential. Now, God first called me, I, inexperienced and underexposed, no Sunday dresses, no hot comb press plaits, 
No Saturday evening preparations, no restless slumbers. Me there, leaning easily easy over the foot of my grandmother's bed. Playground tested knees, resting on faded olive green carpets in the back rooms of tight shared spaces. Cramped family quarters, just off dingy paved walkways, making room for sellers and buyers of divine ideas. Evergreen juke joints and broken promises at the junction of Broad and Alney. Rugged, unsophisticated, broken boulevards and muted corners. And Du Bois' Philadelphia Negro marking time where lotto and street numbers made kings and paupers all one and the same. And you, you still be God. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Infinite presence unlimited potential. Sweet pan-fried cornbread, suffocating long hollow hallways and clogging daybreak on any given Sunday. The scent clung there, lingering for days in the thin curtain-like veils and thrift store couches and in between ponytails tucked neatly in floral printed scarves of girls wearing Wonder Woman pajamas. On our knees, right there, there we met God, we met him, surrendering and folding, unfolding without even knowing, unfolding right there in front of God, there in the silence, the deafening fear of those untrained ears and underprepared heart and my grandmother's deference, scaring and numbing me all at the same time into inspired submission, haunting me just calling me, calling me, and you, you still be God. She knew somehow, she knew, she knew of words and of grace and of hope and of rooted stagnation, folks migrating north by car, mama senses on full alert, concerning daughters and heavy-handed suitors and white wolves circling all while black bodies dangled from trees. She knew, she knew of survival and of pain and of forgiveness and of one room schoolhouses crammed to the rafters, pretending to never forget that separate is never equal. Faceless, frameless, God-filled hope and history, longing for freedom and for itself. Whole and empty all at once, truth recognized truth wrung hands and limbs, worn tired by the peculiar beauty of being born black and female in any town in America, south of Canada. Moonshine inebriated beatings, door front entrances and personal hygiene portals restricted along the color line, labeled though never determining her worth. She was America and I, I too am America and you, you, my brother, you still be God. Infinite presence, unlimited potential. Now, time waits for no one and moves at a pulse and with a rhythm fueled by the energy with which we bless it. Time discovered me searching for God and searching for God and searching for God and God searching for this sister. Although the brother knew where I was the whole time. Searching, me searching in people and in places and places in people and in circumstances rigid and unforgiven. From Bible way to the Bible belt contorted and disillusioned by misplaced obligations, empty agreements strewn across and among deserted church programs and many hotel Bibles tucked in top drawers of wooden side tables retrieved during my travel. The muttering, unearthing of alternate paths. I was often and always on my way to the one. I sure was. The one source, that's where I was on my way to and sometimes I got turned around. Sometimes I got turned out. Narrow understanding and perceptions about love and who I was and who I was be. And then grace and grace some more. And then you, you were still God. It was in that moment, 
caught somewhere in the 90s amidst the cruel self-imposed chaos of my public relationships and climbing Jacob's corporate ladder, configured for, configured for others that I finally unwittingly unclenched my fists and surrendered. And then Epiphany rushed in, and it was just like summertime for a girl born in September. Knocked me clean down, snatched up all my marbles, left words on pages heavy for days. It was then, in that tight crease formed by time, that I learned to pray for myself and to trust the Creator. It was in those early independent solo prayers, unrushed and stubborn, yet full of blessings, and finding myself, and comparing myself, and fearing myself, and forgiving myself, and trapping myself, and remembering myself, and freeing myself for not knowing myself, and then hiding out when it all just became too complex, and then finding you, and finding me again. The answer is slow but steady. The fear and uncertainty was palpable. But you, God, you were in relentless pursuit of me. And when I made and continued to make use of my signature moves, there you go, there I go, discovering you and finding a place for the brothers on the wall. I uncovered Dizzy and Nina and Reverend James Cleveland, Paul Robeson, Shirley Chisholm, James Baldwin, Jimi Hendrix, Sheikh Anta Diop, Mariama Ba, Charlie Pride, Sonia Sanchez, Nelson Mandela, Marian Anderson, Toni Morrison, Miles Davis, Garrett Morgan, Octavia Butler, Dorothy Hyde, Chuck Berry, and me. I discovered me right there. And you, God infinite presence, unlimited potential. Now breaking through to my truth that somewhere between my blackness, my womanness, and God are the poems. And so I write and I wrote and I wrote some more and you, God, filled my pen and those so-called empty spaces, those gathering places, those ancestor wisdoms, those epic memories suited for those descendants of descendants who refused to perish gratitude for generations, salvaged by time and grace, and you were and you still be God. Now, this love letter to God was written a long time ago in a time and a place when emptiness released itself out into the universe, and God strolled in like me, and love, and God gave birth to love. And today, standing tall among giants, no begging, no beseeching, no bartering, no heavy negotiations of the truth with the one. I just am. I am one with the one. Yes, that one. Simply ready for the spirit-filled download. Five decades have come to pass. Your sweet voice, God, though tonally the same, rings differently in these now-trained ears and open and willing heart. Fine-tuned over the years, tears morphed into empowering questions, misguided in fractions, flexed into prosperity, missteps ground into alignment, misgivings forged into forgiving, and mirages of missed opportunities catapulted into the truth beckoning me to clarity through the thick hum of empty street noises and you, and you, God, you still be the one. And I say, I say, I am here. Here I am, here I be. Universal presence, transcending, transmuting, transfiguring, transforming little old me. That same Philly sister raised Baptist on Quaker ideals, allowing, vibrating, vibing all to the hypnotic rhythm that only God could contrive, drive, and lean to decide. 
allowing God, allowing God, allowing God. God, you taught me to weave words from the cauldrons of my epic memory, the prayers of my grandmother, the hopes of my mother, and the vulnerability of my father. God, you the bomb. You the bomb.com, straight up. And so I write and I pray and I write and I pray and I meditate and I pray some more and I write, I pray, and I pause. And when the world speeds up, your rock steady becomes my truth, like pearls of wisdom and poems penned under my name, spinning tidbits into tales and gifts of reconciliation, reclamation, resurrection, retribution, and returns to love. Now, God, I keep finding you, and brother, you keep finding me, and we be cool, like old school, and my favorite Luther Vandross jam. Infinite presence, unlimited power. Now, you've invited me to stages and places and uncovered haikus and hip-hop and rhythms of splendor and verses gravitating to the light. I say simply, very simply, Thank you. Amen. 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 <laughs>